Welcome to Change the Narrative. I'm your host, J.D. Fuller. I'm Susie Younger. An African-American licensed psychotherapist. I'm also a licensed therapist. We talk about the isms. We talk about the phobias. Anything that marginalizes and oppresses. As a white woman, I ask the questions white people are too afraid to ask. Everything we are not and everything we are is because of fear. Through a mental health lens, Susie and I will have difficult conversations with celebrity guests, political activists, and everyone in between. Our mind will tell us whatever we want to believe, but the truth lives in the body, and that's where change occurs. Are you ready to change the narrative? Our next guest today is passionate about America keeping its promise to liberty and freedom. He believes that the basis of so much of our injustice is based on the devastating ruling in in 1968 on the Supreme Court case, Terry versus Ohio, which we're going to talk about today. His website, deletelaws.com, spells it all out for us. He's commanding an audience and people are listening. Welcome, Chile DeCastro. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, Happy to have you. Thank you so much for being willing to come on the show today. I want to uh, have you introduce yourself to our audience. So tell us who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name is Chile De Castro. Me amo Jose Maria De Castro, pero en los Estados Unidos es Chile. My friends called me Chile growing up. I learned Spanish in my 20s. My father spoke Spanish and didn't speak English, so I had to learn Spanish to communicate with him. Uh, I was raised in a very small town in Alaska that is has its fair share of loud vocal racists and loud vocal authoritarians. I had a lot of problems growing up because I have severe ADHD. I have OCD, obsessive, I mean, you can't tell. And, yeah. and also because I was the only one of two Latino kids in the town and one black kid, I was in a hundred fist fights through high school. I mean, when I say a hundred, I'm not joking. So I have a unique story with bullying where I was bullied till I was 12. And then I became a a very good wrestler and then I beat up all the bullies who beat me up so I have a unique path that other people didn't get to live but I did at 25 years old the police no knock raided my house I know exactly who told them I know who their confidential informant is I don't want to give him any light I know what he did he knows what he did he lied to the police and told him I was a drug dealer because I had been teaching MMA and fighting MMA when the police followed me around based on a confidential information tip, when they saw me go to MMA practice, that then warranted them, validated them to no knock raid my house. The first time they raided me was a knock announce raid, which is from Kerr versus California of 1963. Knock, 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 police, police, police. They have to wait, they're supposed to wait 15 seconds, burst down my door. That was the first time I told them everything. I was naive about what the police system was like. I told them everything. They told me kids were dying, I told them everything. So then the second time they came back a month later, I had told them that I would gladly turn myself in. They no knock raided me the second time. And that experience, just, I could tell you a lot of other stories, but I think for the purpose of this particular podcast, I think that a lot of people, that's the reason why I'm here now, because it formed who I am today. And when you're not secure in your home, respect to the Fourth Amendment, That'll, that will affect you for the rest of your life, as it has me. So, um, wow. so, you know, people identify me as being white when I was prosecuted for five felonies for the words I said to Chief of Police Michael Moore, who was a detective then. They said during the opening arraignment at five o'clock in the morning down at Twin Towers, they said, Your Honor, Mr. DeCastro comes from a long family of drug dealers. And because he's Colombian and his father was in the drug business, we feel like he's a high flight risk. Though there was no evidence seized against me, there's no evidence, possession evidence. They gave me a two and a half million dollar bail because I'm Colombian. So that's why if you ever watch any of my things and someone says, I don't understand racism, they left me in a dungeon for a week based on the concept that because I'm Colombian, I must be a high flight risk. I didn't know my father then. So, so anyway, so I can keep going on and on, but I just wanted to, that's the story and story of my life. And the reason, if you ever see some salt dog, you know, salty dog come out of me when people tell me I don't understand racism, that's why, you know, so just, you guys know. 
Well, I knew you were interesting, but that sure does fill in a lot of gaps for us. And I appreciate you uh, going there. You know, I was going to ask you who you were 10 years ago versus who you are today. You kind of talked about it. Would you go into that a little bit more in depth? 10 years ago, um, 10, who, was, who was I 10 years ago? That's a great question. 10 years ago, I, I moved to Hollywood, California. When the police no knock raided me, that derailed my acting career. I had been booking, I booked a series, I booked a Pepsi commercial with Britney Spears. I booked a sea commercial national. I booked a national this, I was just on fire. I was very open and gregarious and very loving and would let everybody come to my house to have a party bring whoever you want. I didn't have a no guys list. In LA, there's always no guys list. Mm -hmm. So so then I became very popular with, with the guys. Hey, Chili, we'll let everybody come to his house. Absolutely. I'm not intimidated by another man just because he's another man. And that's 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 the LA way a lot. So, um, so I was pretty open. And then that jaded me to the core, that no not grade. So 10 years ago, I was, I had, I had, I had written a book on sociology, a textbook that was hypersexual situations within social cliques. I had done a 10 year study on sexual communications within a social clique when a hypersexual situation happened. In other words, if, you know, if we're dating and we're in a clique and then one of, we break up or we don't break up and one of the friends in the clique dates you, what happens to the clique? So that's what I was doing 10 years ago. I was interviewing people about what happened in a click when they had a hypersexual situation happen. And then I raised some money and I started a tech company um, and the technology business, just so you know, you're going to have less than a 1% chance of having any kind of successful business. And, and I'm not making excuses for myself. I just, yeah. it didn't work. I tried, it didn't work out. So then a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I have a, I have a rich investor who's a white Republican, two time Trump voter. And he said, you know so much about the law. That's, I have this idea for a show called Delete Laws. And so I took his concept seven years ago and put it into a pilot. And then after that pilot, Jeff and I had a big falling out because he didn't want to show police violence. And I was like, the problem is the police violence. I wasn't willing to budge. He wasn't willing to budge. Project got shelved. It's done, it's on my YouTube. And then, uh, a year ago, we, Jeff and I m melded our business fracture. Mm -hmm. Our friendship still remained. We still hung out. We still went out together and hung out. And then a year ago, I produced uh, The Terry Era, which is on my YouTube page, Delete Laws with a Z. And I just see a tipping point here right now to, to change this world. So, so that's why I've come out. And, and if we had interviewed a month ago, I probably would have, I, I was probably more salty. <laughs> talking for a month, telling total strangers, crying in front of a thousand people, you know, uh, showing the raw emotions of what I go through when I read about a case. And then I go into the family and the sisters and the brothers in the high school. And I look up their Facebook page and their, any other, their LinkedIn. And I look up their IMDB. I look up everything they've ever done. Um, and showing that vulnerability. I'm a real A personality egotistical macho male um there's no other way to say it and so so you know literally crying in front of people um and telling the story of being known operated has made me a happier person <laughs> yeah. i'm i if we had interviewed a month ago when we first talked i i would I, I was still dealing with the fact that i hadn't really told very many people that the police had known operated me and i still had a lot of these feelings as though you know, in my own personal family, a lot of people still think, and they told me to my face, you must have done something wrong for the cops to know and operate your house twice. <laughs> the, yeah. the guy who was the confidential informant was a celebrity. So they were working for their money. They were working for the big business. So, so that's the reason. That's just a little kind of a nutshell of, of how I got to here. You yeah. know, without, without being known and operated, without Breonna Taylor being murdered, without Jeff Lloyd coming back and saying, I believe in you, let me give you some more money to produce some more content. You know, without having an investor who would invest in cop stuff, where we're gonna show cops being the bad guys that they are, you know? And 
without those processes, I wouldn't be here now, you know, and, and also the natural curiosity that I have about, it wasn't Terry v. Ohio, the reason that they could no not grade me, it was Illinois versus Gates, a 1983 case that superseded the 1969 case of Spinelli versus United States. So when I started to do something called jurisprudence or stare decisis, you know, depends on who you're talking to, it's the same thing, case precedents of the past is stare decisis. I didn't go to law school. So, so then I started to trace back Illinois versus Gates attached to Terry. And now the study that I've done just this year alone has le led to breakthroughs in the research that traces back the drug laws, not just to Harry Anslinger, because the racism that Harry Anslinger projected was just to get the laws passed by the racist Congress. The real truth is that Harry Anslinger was working for big oil. He had inherited the wealth of, and of Andrew Mellon, who he married his daughter, who was the secretary of treasury for FDR. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is revelation. If people are seeing this and they don't know what I'm talking about, our entire penal system, criminal justice system, the reason why your friend goes to jail for marijuana today is because of capitalism, J.D. Rockefeller, the Standard yeah. Oil Company, tracing all the way back to Harry Anslinger getting a piece of one of the subsidiaries of Standard Oil. And then because he was in the head of the Federal Narcotics Agency, he then created law based around making sure that hemp couldn't compete with the fossil fuel industry and the pharmaceutical industry he had inherited from Andrew Mellon by marrying his daughter. So revelations in understanding our criminal justice system. Well, I think what's interesting about that is you actually answered three questions in one, because I was going to ask you, you know, why are you so passionate about uh, the activism? You answered that. But also, I was going to ask you, you know, what came first? You know, the, uh, the capitalism in terms of how we see it running the judicial system or the judicial system, and you just, you know, kind of collapsed that all into one and made it really easy to understand. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, I don't know how much of a visual you guys will get. I don't know how much of a visual you'll get from my Zoom camera here on my, on my laptop. But the, the real truth is you just, you, you can, the reason I built this is to, because I want to spit my brain on the wall to show literally racists who say that there's no such thing as institutional racism. Unfortunately, I can prove it. There is. But Standard Oil was broken up in, in, in 1863. Mm -hmm. And now what's going to happen is it, it starts in 1863. It's going to be broken up in 1911. So now, as you guys all know, the way it works is rich people control the legislature, legislature controls the policing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a layer cake. So yeah. when Standard Oil gets broken up in 1911, now you have dozens of rich white men who have stock and own ownership of fossil fuels. Now these rich white men are going to look down in Mexico and over at the Indian hemp industry and say, we don't want that over here. They passed the Harrison Act in 1914, just three years after Standard Oil gets broken up. Then all these guys, because they've made us, you have to get a tax license for hemp. You can't really get hemp in America. But marijuana is as popular as ever in 1914 as it is today. So now right here, the League of Nations is going to ban marijuana in 1925. Why did they ban cannabis in 1925? For what? Because the League of Nations, all those countries are experimenting using hemp as, a, as an energy source. Okay. So now you can go down the rights and Elizabeth Wright and what she does at the League of Nations and her, her direct connection to J.D. Rockefeller. Remember, Rockefeller may have broken up Standard Oil, but he was still the chairman of the board. He still had a vested interest. So Rockefeller gives $10 million to the, to the Egyptian Museum of Cairo, $10 million in 1926. Really? What's the, do the math on that. What's $10 million today? For a museum? Is that what he did? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Well, sure. So then now, now here's the really ironic part. Here's the really ironic part. So this is Andrew Mellon here. Andrew Mellon, he's going to, Harry's going to marry his daughter and he's going to diversify his money into Lamont DuPont and William Randolph Hearst. And then J.D. Rockefeller is going to die in 1937. Andrew Mellon is going to pass the Marijuana Tax Act and die in 1937. And this is the link I try to tell to all people. This is where Harry goes crazy. He's inherited the fortune of his father-in-law. Now he's going to make damn sure that hemp can never get a breath. 
So now he incorporates the FDA, he incorporates the World Health Organization. And in 1961, at the single convention on narcotics of drugs that he hosts in Manhattan, flies everybody in, puts them in the Waldorf. They all agree, marijuana is the devil drug. So as now it's internationally criminalized. 63, we, stop, we start procedural law, common law to kick your door down based on the Kurds being marijuana dealers. The exigent circumstances clause is then gonna be invoked again in Terry v. Ohio, exigent meaning that loss of life could be the officer's life or yours. And the cops are helping people by grabbing them. They're helping you. So it's wait, so I wanna stop you there because that's exactly where I was gonna go next because you had some thoughts that we shared in uh, our communication about, um, I'm just going to see what it was. Okay, so it's like you said, you know, no justice, no peace and defund the police. It's not where the focus should be. So say something about that because you brought me right to the point where I wanna be. It's just the most counterproductive thing I've ever heard. You know, and at first we had to say it. We had to brand the Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. They don't to this government, they don't. Now, today, they don't. No, they don't. They I don't. Agree. If JD right now gets killed on camera, unless there's a big outrage, everybody's talking about, yay, George Floyd got justice. There never would have been justice without a camera. Exactly. You know, so, so this idea that Black Lives Matter, okay. Now we need to shift the page. Martin Luther King Jr. saw legislation signed. What legislation is BLM asking for? Don't give me a laundry list of crap. Give me the tip of the spear. Show me where the police interaction happens with the person on the street. Now, I go over the Fourth Amendment in great detail on my, on my, on my uh, social media pages. You have a right to be secure in your person against unreasonable searches and seizures. Terry v. Ohio passed in 68. What was going on in 61, 62, 54, 55, 56? It was passed so that cops could grab black people, just straight up. White people weren't getting grabbed unless you were poor, dirt poor, and you worked in an assembly plant where there would be an uprising. You didn't get grabbed. You just didn't. Just like the 1911 Sullivan Act. It didn't apply to your gun rights. It does now. It does today. Same, same law from 1911 that was only passed against black people is now applied to all people that says you have to get permission from the president of the police bureau to get gun rights. So JD, you, I'm not a black savior, okay? That, this idea that I did this for black people, I did it selfishly for me. And then realizing that the, all the laws were crafted against black people. And I, I do have a deep affinity for black people. A couple of best friends in my life for years have been black, couple, they still are my best friends. So, so it, you, you have to change the message, JD. It's the only reason I'm on your show. I'm only here right now to infect your brain, to infect others. And maybe someone sees me and say, man, this crazy Colombian guy, fine, I'm crazy. Change your narrative. <laughs> well, here's the thing, you know, we've gotten to an exchange and I told you I wanted to do this on the show because I, I don't disagree with you that the message needs to be expanded. That's not ever what I said, I appreciate it. I think the difficulty and the challenge is if we go at each other about the message to the point um, at which it becomes a distraction, I'm sorry, that's a stupid messenger, um, at, which, at which point it becomes a distraction and it works for the dominant oppressive culture, that's what concerns me. So I am in agreement that the message needs to be expanded. I never wanted to hear you see, hear, hear you I never wanted you to hear me say that I disagreed. That's not it. It's the fact that it's like, for example, I don't go around bashing black people. I just don't do it. <laughs> I don't you? do it because there's enough white people doing that. So I have opinions about certain people and I keep them to myself. I talk about them amongst my community. You'll never see me post anything about it. And that's that reason. I feel the same way about us and what we're talking about. We can't be out publicly talking about, no, change the message. This is bad, this is better. I think we have to find a way to talk about it, come together, figure it out, and then present it. That's my only point. Does that make okay. sense? Sure, sure. Well, 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 that's why I'm here, so let's talk about it. John Terry's standing on the street. He's talking to children, he's talking to cats. They're milling around. Sounds like they're on speed to me. Sounds like they did speed and they're milling around, walking around like crackheads. That's what it sounds like to me. If you read the actual case. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cop McFadden <laughs> says, I have a video on this on my Delete Laws YouTube page. I break it down, show you the scene, show you where they are, show you in Euclid Avenue, what it looks like in 1961 and in, in 1963. I break it down. You have a right to stand on the street. Mill around, talk to anybody you want, walk around cracked out, right? You can do whatever you want. The whole crux of, care, of Terry, John Terry, was a human being. Cops cannot run up and grab you. That goes against our Bill of Rights. You have a right to be free in your person. That's a guarantee by the Bill of Rights. Police don't have the right to grab you. That's straight and bullshit. Created by a white supremacist Supreme Court that got Thurgood Marshall to vote for Terry Laws. The liberal Supreme Court lawyer who fought the Kerr case. It's incredible to me that, that, that there's, and this is why I haven't left my conservative roots and I've kept my conservative roots. And a lot of people will say I'm a, I'm a conservative. And then the people who are conservatives will tell you I'm a flaming liberal. Yeah. We, it's not, I don't gotta get you JD. Mm -hmm. We gotta get the white conservatives who want to fight for liberty. And then you got to get the, you got to get the urban youth, black people to start to say overturn terror. That has to become the resounding, the tip of the spear. I watched 20 videos yesterday. The cop walks up to him, says, I'm suspicious of you. That's a Terry stop. You, I keep on hearing it, walking while black, walking with dog, walking, driving while black. Mm -hmm. Those are Terry stops. Yeah. Let's start to identify them properly so that we know what the, to go after legislatively. You know, and so that's the problem, right? Because as you said, they're all in bed with each other. Everybody has a sellout factor when it comes to politics. Politics, We know that. And so the reason why there's a, you know, stop Asian hate bill and there's not a, a stop black people hate bill, it, we know why. You know, politically lobbyists, uh, the community has figured out that that's a way to not anger so as many people as if they talk about reparations in a bill that stops um, hate against black people. We get it. So how do we get, how do we get a lobbyist? How, how do black people get somebody who's going to gain some, some traction the way white gay males did for, for, for gay marriage? Like what, what do you say is the, the solution? It's going to be legislation. You're going to have to start in a liberal state like California, um, New Hampshire, live free or die. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how we're going to, I'm building the momentum. That's what I'm doing. I'm, my, I make everybody go through the website. I give them free eBooks. I give them free wall graphics, anything I can give them to get them to sign up on the website so that I can build up a list of people. And when you get an email from me, it says, this is not a drill, because I send out emails every week. If the email says, this is not a drill, it's time to march. And we're not going to march for another hashtag. Not going to march for another Jim, Jim Johnson, Eric Garner, Sandra. We're not going to march for another one. What's the point? We keep on doing the same thing over and over. I've built this to show you guys, we keep on repeating history. We have three police commissions. They all say police are lawless. They need an external third party. Why don't we do that? Yeah. The, enough with the civil litigation payouts in New York alone. It's crazy. Oh, it's ridiculous. Okay. It's ridiculous. We, so I, this is why I can't subscribe to the left. This is why I can't do it. They're so busy infighting about what the better idea is about, oh, I'd like to do it like this, but let's do it like that a little bit. It's like, it's such a big infight constantly with the left. It ne they never come together and coalesce under one idea, one banner. And so people have told me to change my personality, be nice or do these things. I'm in my forties. I can say black people instead of saying blacks that I read in history books and I watch on historical videos, but I've heard and seen the name blacks literally thousands of times. So if I say blacks, I'm not trying to be rude. I can adjust that. You're gonna be really hard to take the 25 years of fighting MMA out of me. It's going to be hard for me to lose my edge. It's going to be tough. So I know that I'm not the best leader in the whole world. I need to reach people like JD who have the ability to reach others through empathy. And I come off like a bull in a China shop. The reason I'm even on social media is because they took a video of me, Amber Blay, whatever her name was on TikTok, 
and branded me a white supremacist when I was down teaching young black males about Terry v. Ohio during the George Floyd protests. I went down to wow. teach young black men because they're the ones targeted of a Terry stop. I was down there educating. Some girl took a video of me and then some wafy gay guy came by and I came, I came undone on him because he interrupted. And he said, what are you doing? You shouldn't listen to this guy. I don't know what he's telling you, but it's probably bad. And you know, it's so funny because my best friend's gay. I go to, the, I shouldn't tell people where I go out. I go out on gay road. When I go out to party, go to the gay bars. Way more fun than anything else. Way more fun. The chicks are better. The dudes are better. There's no fights. It's great. The music's better. The gay community is mine. So it's ironic how you, the, the times I've been stressed out in high stress situations, it's been by some gay guy who walked by and said some stupid comment. And it happened again last night when I was filming police. Anyway, he walks by and he goes, don't talk to that guy. He's probably doing you bad. And so I went after him and I said, what are, what are you offering? Are you offering young black males anything? Because they are being targeted. This lynching chart, you're not on, right? So, so then she took a video of me and said, this white supremacist is down here harassing us. We can't even march for George Floyd. Her video got 2 million views. Mm. So I got calls from my friends and family. They're branding you a white supremacist. We know you're not. We know you don't like police and you certainly are not a white supremacist. So then I just released all the video of the whole thing because I had okay. a cameraman filming me as I was interviewing people. So I released the whole tape and my video got 30,000 views. So okay. there's 1.97 million people who still believe I was a white supremacist targeting uh, some young black male harassing him <laughs> just well well clearly we need to change that so you know <laughs> that's why i reached out to you i wanted to give you some air time and i want to continue to communicate with you right now i'm going to kick it to susie she's got a few questions for you sure hi there so if you had a mission statement what would it be overturn terry v ohio <laughs> right there on your all your social media i love it perfect tell us the and I'm putting it in quotes, your words, hard truth about Roe versus Wade. It doesn't matter if you're pro-choice or pro-life. That's not really what it boils down to for you and me or our children. The hard truth about Roe versus Wade is that it's been classified under the Ninth Amendment of the Constitution that are unenumerated rights that belong to you. And pretty much with both Griswold versus Connecticut and Roe versus Wade, Griswold's birth control, those cases have classified the Ninth Amendment as being body sovereignty, almost like body privacy. That's the branding of the Ninth Amendment so far. There may be more unenumerated rights that we don't know we need later in life. Like for example, I don't have to go to space if you tell me I have to go to space. It's an unenumerated right. It very well could happen in the next hundred years. I don't have to move to Mars because you tell me the planet's crumbling. Right, that's an unenumerated right, for example. So we didn't know women would be able to be pro-choice and stop pregnancies. We didn't know women would be able to take birth control. So the unenumerated right you have is under the Ninth Amendment. So I don't give a, I don't care your particular viewpoint on pro-choice or pro-life. I care if you go against the Ninth Amendment that classifies under Roe versus, that classifies Roe v. Wade. And if you go against the Ninth Amendment, you are against me. And if you go against the Second Amendment, you will find me sternly in the other corner against you. So just be sure of what you ask for, because if you insist that women have to spread their legs for the government, then the very next step is you will be forced to take a global medication. Whether you want to take it or not, just figure out what that is, right? That's, that's my position. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Um, what is the message you want people to take away from this interview today? I want you to talk to your friends about Terry versus Ohio. I've, I've taught fundamentally that Terry v. Ohio has supplanted and replaced your Fourth Amendment right. So the Fourth Amendment says it's the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. So what that means is that you have a right to be free. And if you don't talk to your friends that they put officer safety being more important than your right to be free, and here's how I prove it all the time. Tennessee versus Garner, 1985, 
Wilson versus Arkansas, 1995. Both of these cases are based on the constitutionality of a seizure or a breach of your home, both under the Fourth Amendment. You have a right to be secure in your person. You have a right to be secure in your home. So in Tennessee versus Garner, the case is whether or not Eugene Garner can run away and not be shot in the back of the head. If that's constitutional or not for police to be able to shoot you in the back of the head when you run away, Eugene Gardner died that day in 1974. The Supreme Court heard the case in 1984, 1985, and they ruled that it's unconstitutional for cops to shoot you in the back when you run away, unless it's in the name of officer safety, which is the Terry v. Ohio holding, which makes Terry v. Ohio take the place of the Fourth Amendment. If it's unconstitutional to shoot you in the back of the head when you run away, then it's always unconstitutional, whether or not it's for officer safety or not. Wilson versus Arkansas 1995 case, Breonna Taylor, says that police constitutionally cannot no-knock raid your home unless it's in the name of officer safety. So I have effectively proven that Terry v. Ohio supplants the Fourth Amendment, which means that this Supreme Court, an unelected court, has completely failed in their mission. And we have to make them electable. We have to, both Tennessee versus Garner and Wilson versus Arkansas hinge on Terry versus Ohio. They can't exist without it. So that's the message I wanna get. You gotta start to talk to your friends about Terry versus Ohio. You have to. And then we're gonna have to get to Kerr and we're gonna have to go back to Carroll versus United States in 1925. That's the message I wanna get out. You have to start to talk to your friends. Okay. And, I think you got it out there. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, 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 listen, I can't turn the intensity off. It costs me dearly all the time. It costs me in personal relationships. It costs me in family relationships. It costs me in business. It costs me in love. It costs me in every regard because of my intensity. I cannot turn it off. So even when I talk to you now, you guys are like, man, that guy was so intense, right? If you say to me, hey, do you want, do you want waffles or pancake? And I go, I'll take pancakes. And you go, what, what, what's wrong with the pancakes? <laughs> I just said I want a pancakes. I'll take the pancakes. But just this stare at you and all of a sudden you're like, dude, what? You don't want the French toast? <laughs> I just said, give me the pancakes. But you gave me that look. <laughs> So I know I answered all your questions and it's like this super, you know, my sister, Anna, who's definitely super leftist, super. She tells me all the time, you know, don't be so mad, don't be so angry. And now that we've built this relationship over the pandemic, we really got close over the pandemic. Uh, she doesn't say that anymore because I'm not mad. I'm not upset right now. I'm just super passionate and super intense about you getting this message. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I talk to people, I stare at them and they get like, does this guy want to fight me or something? <laughs> it's like, no, no, I don't. I want to get the message across. See that as your passion. Yeah. Katie? So, all right. So well, here's the thing. Um, first of all, I can relate to your passion. I, I think that's what drew me to you, you know, on social media. I wanted to know who you were, more about you. I'm so happy you came on and uh, I'd like to have you back. Um, I, I think we have more to do with each other for sure. So I want to stay connected, um, but I want people to know where they can. Uh, and now I know why I'm buying your shirt. So I, I think it's awesome. So tell people where they can get your merch, please. Uh, go to deletelaws.com. Hopefully my computer doesn't die here. It's uh, delete laws with a Z. D E L E T E L A W. You hold it, hold it still. So hold it, hold it still. There you go. Deletelaws.com. That stick just shows you. Um, so you got the website. My, I'm at Chile De Castro, but that stick just shows you the prison system after Terry V. Ohio. So that, you know, I just try to show this to as many people as I can. And remember, you're smarter than me. The person watching this is very likely smarter than I am. So I'm not very smart and I figured that out. So that means that. Yeah, well, I, I, I'd like to. Uh, rebuke that you are very smart and i'm appreciative for your intelligence and what's next for you um so the the next step is i have a i did three so i'm not sure if you guys know or not but and i'm sure that you don't 
I did three parts of Terry V Ohio. Okay. And the, the breakdown I just gave you guys of standard oil, I've, I've read everything I can about Harry Anslinger, about Terry. I've, I've just read it, read it, read it. But when I had the time and the space provided by my Republican Trump voting uh, investor, I really just took the time to research, 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 to dig into Terry. And I, and I found the actual, the gun. I found the gun. I found the gun in the pile. And it is exigent circumstances. And exigent circumstances, 99% of the time are based on alcohol or drugs. You lose all your rights. So the next step for me is to produce this next hour long documentary where I'm gonna show the exact problem is the criminalization of chemical. And that the guy who made all the drug laws, he made them for fossil fuels. He made them for the fossil fuel industry. He had zero interest in helping anybody. The most selfish piece of shit. He's almost like one of those guys that like, if you could go back like Hitler, if you could go back and he was a baby in the crib. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got what you're saying. It, it's, such, it's such a morbid thought because- No, I get it. You know, I'm an empath. So I may seem like this hard charger, but I can get my feelings hurt and cry. So the idea of hurting someone even on the street, you know, isn't, doesn't appeal to me, but finding Hitler in a crib at one or finding Harry Anslinger in a crib at one or John D. Rockefeller in a crib at one years old. Is there a cliff nearby? <laughs> I want. I don't. I don't want to see anything. I just want look, to open and just run. Ah! <laughs> look, I'm not trying to ruin your reputation, so let's stop there. Look, um, Tilly, I, I think you're awesome. This was great. Thank you so much. Please come back again. Let's stay in connection with each other and continue to to spread the message because I'm I'm down with what you're talking about for real. I appreciate. So nice you. to meet you guys. Please do me a favor if you guys ever go to a protest and you hear any kind of chant that doesn't say overturn Terry. I'm actually coming out, the next thing for me, just so you know, I didn't say it, I'm coming out with a song, with a, with a, with a song. It's got like an army beat kind of feel, like a, like a overturn Terry. I got, I've got like six different beats. Got I've it created. in your head. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna so. happen. Well, I can't wait to hear it and I can't wait for our audience to hear it. Thank right. you so much. I really appreciate you, man. Really great, great spending time with you in person. Well, in semi-person. Yeah, nice but, uh, we'll nice we'll do more. You. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. All right. See you later. Later, guys. Bye.